the tournament ends tonight, we shall have to discuss Team India's hits and misses during the course of Asia Cup. I am joined at this hour by Cricket Administrator Amrit Mathur. Amrit, let's start with the form of uh, Virat Kohli, the return of Virat Kohli to form ahead of the World Cup. Even, even though India were knocked out of the Asia Cup, would you say that has been the biggest plus for India in this tournament? Yeah, Rika, you mentioned about the hits and misses of the Asia Cup for India. I think lots of misses. And as you correctly said, I think the only positive from the tournament, the only hit in a way, has been the return of form to Virat. And uh, he looks close to where he was, the best player in the world. And I think it's great for India that he's in good form. And because we got the World Cup a month away, and there was so much speculation and so much concern about his form, his uh, lack of runs, his weight, three-year wait for his 100. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, all that is in the past and Virat Kohli at number number four, number three is an asset which India desperately needs to fire in case we need to do well in the World Cup. Amrit, I'm just curious to ask you at this point, you said Virat Kohli back at his best. Given that the opposition was Afghanistan and, you know, they were a very tired side that day having played a high-intensity game against Pakistan the previous night, would you still say that you know, this is the Virat Kohli that we were looking forward to see, or maybe he should be tested against a better opposition? Listen, two things, Rika. One is, you're right that it was Afghanistan and they were coming back after a you know, very sort of a close defeat the previous day. And uh, so you might put, put that in context when you look at Virat's runs. But the other side is that Virat making those runs looked very good. He mm -hmm. middled the ball, he, he was confident, he did whatever he wanted to do. And I think that's positive. That's a very positive sign because ultimately batting is a game of confidence. Mm -hmm. And I think Virat just needed this big score, uh, maybe just to reassure himself and everybody else about you know uh, his class, his back to return to form. I think it's a manner in which he made the runs, not the opposition, which is more important. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about the openers. Now that Virat Kohli is back in form, both Rohit Sharma and Kail Rahul have got. 50s in this tournament, would you say that the opening three is right now sorted for India? I think so. I think also number four at Surya Kumar. I don't think there's going to be much change in the top four. But from India's perspective, the Asia Cup has actually posed more questions than offered answers. You know, there's uh, so much confusion, lack of clarity about uh, which player fits in where, who's the best option in different positions. Mm -hmm. You know, we expected... Um, Panth to be an option, but he didn't do well. We will we will come to it one by one. Uh, Amrit, okay. I'm first dealing with the positives and then we'll come to all the questions that were uh, posed during the course well, of the tournament. As we, as we yeah. discussed just now, I think the positive is only Virat, nothing yeah. else. Also, one of the things I would really li like to ask you, since Virat Kohli has now come back to form, is there a case for him to open then in the World Cup? Well, I think, you know, it's... Uh, uh, it would be better to for him to stay where he is because uh, KL Rahul and uh, Rohit Sharma do occupy the opener slot. Hmm. So, to put Virat up, you would be disturbing the other two. So, I think I think India will be conservative. They'll do what is orthodox. They will retain Rahul and Rohit at the top and play uh, Virat later with Surya Kumar, I guess. I'm also joined at this hour by sports broadcaster Charu Sharma. Charu, welcome to the show. We are discussing India's hits and misses in the Asia Cup. Now, let's talk a little bit about, you know, Rohit Sharma's strategy of hitting from the first ball. Would you say, since he was not in the team and Virat Kohli was opening that day, Virat played more freely and he did not really go after the ball from the uh, uh, very first, uh, you know, ball he faced. And thereby, since he had the time to settle in, uh, that was the reason, primary reason, where, uh, why he got to that century. Well, two things. One, of course, very happy to always be in the company of Mr. Martha, uh, old friend of mine. Uh, delighted as always. But if you're trying to suggest that uh, Mr. Kohli scored runs because Mr. Sharma was absent, <laughs> that's a bit thick. No, I am so talking about the strategy of going after the ball he, from the very he, first... From the very yes. first ball, yeah. Yes, it's a T20 match. No? T20 is very brutal in that sense. And you get very little time to settle down. And there's an equal amount of pressure as an opener as well. 
take time to settle down. The, what's the alternative here? That you take 35 balls to score 20, and then you're ready to accelerate, and then you get out. You basically lost the game uh, at that point in time for your team because it's very difficult for others to then recover. So it's all about strike rate. Yes, the openers have a little bit of leeway because they can always improve their strike rate. But, you know, a good uh, T20 player needs to have a minimum of 130, 135 at the strike rate. Mm -hmm. So you are talking about pressure right from the beginning. There's England that's been winning test matches recently because of Baz Ball trying to go hard from the first ball in test match cricket even on T20. So there is a lot of scoring pressure, no doubt. I think a lot depends on only two things. One, the nature of the pitch. Mm -hmm. And if you sense that it's a difficult pitch, obviously you're not going to play too many shots to begin with. You want to settle in. To the nature or the ability of the opposition bowlers. They're very, very good. They're swinging it all over the place. Obviously, you take a little bit of time. But otherwise, T20 is all about scoring quickly. And if you don't, very often, you might get 15, 60 mm -hmm. and lose the match for your country because others don't have the time. Amrit, uh, let's now talk about the things that did not go India's way. Bowling, fast bowling especially, would you say that was the weakest link? Bhuvaneshwar Kumar in the end got five wickets, but has he really redeemed himself in a way that he should be included in the World Cup team? Well, he's supposed to be your main T20 player, uh, bowler, but he's had two bad games. And I think the Indian team desperately needs uh, both uh, Bumrah to be back at his best, also Harshil Patel, because the bowling looked weak. You know, uh, did we, uh, did Chahar, did Hardik, did uh, Ashdeep really put up their hands and win games? No, they didn't. So, there are questions in the bowling, especially the pace bowling. Mm -hmm. There are questions in the spin department. Now that you don't have Jadija, you know, Kuldeep Yadav is sitting out. Vishnoi had one good game, then sat out. So, I think there's a lot of open, uh, loose ends as far as team selection and player uh, options are concerned. The same goes for, for, for batting, you know, you, Pant didn't really do well, you had Huda coming in, that actually also didn't work out. Mm -hmm. So, I think there's a lot of confusion about the team balance, about uh, which player fits in where, is it DK is your answer or Pant mm -hmm. is the yeah. So, a lot of questions about players and their roles and their, their options of team balance. Mm -hmm. Also, I think as Charu mentioned, there is an issue about the strategy. Do we go and play a T20 game as England is trying to play now, which is attack from ball one and continue attacking for 20 overs regardless mm. because you play with seven batsmen mm. and it's like one continuous power play. Mm. Or do you assess situation after 10 overs, 12 overs and pull back again? Mm. So I think in the Asia Cup, we saw confusion about both things, about team balance players and also about team strategy. Mm -hmm. So going into the World Cup after a month, uh, lots of questions for the Indian team, but hopefully we got three matches against Australia, three matches against South Africa, and hopefully we'll sort out. And that's sort it, yeah. And then the World Cup. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Charu, I'll also have to ask you one question about the Indian spin department, particularly the leg spin department. There was a time when we were obsessed with the idea of Kulcha, Kuldip, and Chahel. Chahel did get some wickets towards the end of the tournament. But, you know, with him not working, should Kuldeep Yadav be considered? And Ravi Ashwin was in the side, but he wasn't a first-choice spinner. Oh, boy, Rika. The time for experimentation or churn is over. You've got very little time now. And if till the Asia Cup, we're still wondering who, who, which will be our best 15 or best 11. And we're in deep trouble because now there's no time. We're playing two quality sides, a few T20s that we're playing now. And there's absolutely no more time for experimentation. So whoever the selectors now go with in consultation with the uh, support staff, the coaching staff, as well as the captain, that is going to be it. We cannot now experiment anymore. We've got to take some hard decisions, put a stone on our heart and carry on. And of course, that's why selectors are there. I mean, you know, we can talk as much as we like and I hope somebody's listening, but basically it's the job of the selectors. And let me tell you, it's not an easy job, but they need to do it now. They need to commit, get the players that are playing for the World Cup and go with it. Only in cases of perhaps an injury or some really bad performances can they think of uh, maybe substituting a player. But now, the final 15, 14, 11 needs to be clearly thought about the people given their roles. Let them dream about it all along and let them perform at the World Cup. Now there's no more time to say, what about this and what about that? And what about him and what about uh, him? Charu, two words that stand out for me from that discussion is hard decisions. We'll have to wait and see what kind of yes. hard decisions 
the selectors take after the Asia Cup exit of Team India and they were knocked out in the Super 4 stage. Thank you very much Charu and Amrit for joining me on the show at this hour.